Hello everyone and welcome to episode 133 of the Cherry Heart Podcast. I am Sandra and this is a crafty podcast featuring crochet, knitting and sewing for the most part. Um, you will be able to find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk that's where I put the pattern names and yarns and uh, details about the things I talk about so if you miss anything in the video you can just pop along there to find it and I always put a little link in the down bar below uh, in the description box below the video which is also where you'll find the time scamp stamp time scamps oh you little scamp um yes yeah, so if you want to scamper about the video that's where the time scamps are um what else do i need to tell you oh i'm mostly on instagram which is sandra cherry hrt uh, elsewhere around the web i'm normally cherry heart so you'll be able to find me that way um I think that's all the beginning blurb. I just want to say um, a big thank you um, and also a welcome actually because I did a craft room video um, a few weeks ago now actually and um, yeah it just got a really great response um, and I got quite a few new f um, subscribers as a result of that so thanks ever so much if you watched that and if you're new around here welcome, welcome to my channel. Um, I hope you've been enjoying what you found so far. Um, yeah, but it's really lovely to have, well I would say some new faces here, but obviously I can't see, it, see your faces, so that doesn't make any sense. But it's nice to have you here all the same, and I've been enjoying sort of reading, you know, comments from from some of you as well. So that's been really good. Um, and also I turned my, uh, the little super thanks thingy me jiggy on. Um, I noticed it popped up on YouTube, they go, you know, we've got this, do you want to do it? So I thought, fine. But yeah, I've had a couple of um, super thanks come through as well. So that's really kind. Thank you very much for that. It's very appreciated. Um, actually, I don't know why I'm waffling on about this stuff because I've got things to get through today. I feel like I've got quite a bit to share. So, and I've got the hair hanging down, distracting me. Um, so let's get into it. Um, first of all, it's just a quick one. I meant to show you this um, on my last podcast when I was um, podcasting with Sam. It was so lovely to podcast with Sam again and quite a lot of you were like, yes, I really miss Sam's podcast. Um, if you've been here a while and you followed Sam of Betsy Makes as well, you'll know about that. But yeah, it was lovely to see her again, wasn't it? Um, but anyway, these were done at the time, but I forgot to show them. So these are just some longer uh, let's, sh let's show you how long they are because they don't actually fit on the blockers cool. I need some longer blockers so yeah so they're actually that long and um, this was inspired by Jules lovely so sweet violet um, she had knit a pair like this I think hers were sort of a more brownie color and they were just simple just a simple rib pattern and I thought, oh, she had them on with a skirt, I think, or a dress. I thought, oh, that looks really lovely. I want a pair of those. So, uh, yeah, I just knit a pair. I pretty much followed my, um, my pick and mix socks pattern. That's kind of where I have my vanilla sock. Um, so I pretty much followed that. So they are cuffed down. So I just did a basic one by one rib. Then the ribbings. Oh, I actually, because I was doing them wider, I did the rib, it's two by two, but I actually started quite a few of the ribs at the back, like made the knitted bit three, and then I kind of decreased them as I went down to the heel, just because I've got quite, um, quite thick ankles, so I thought I'm going to need that extra give. Um, yeah, so I did do that, and I used a Fish Lips Kiss heel. So that's kind of one of my favourite to do and I think the toe again is just one in my pattern I think it's just sort of a basic wedge toe or variation thereof I don't think I did anything particularly you know interesting or innovative there yes the only thing I did uh, my only mistake I suppose is that I had just finished what had I just finished Something that I've made in this flora, this grey yarn. God, how quickly they forget. What was 
was it? I only shared it on the podcast a few weeks ago. I'm sure of it. Anyway, whatever it was, I just finished it. And then I saw this these socks. And I was like, oh, I want them in a nice neutral colour as well. A nice brown or a nice grey. And this sort of grey was sitting there right beside me. And I thought, oh, I'll just use that. So this is Drops Flora yarn, which is a wool and alpaca, alpaca blend. Oh, that's it. I'd used it on my Silver Forest sweater. I knew it was something recent with the colour work. Um, yeah, so there's no nylon in those, there's no silk in those, there's nothing to add any strength particularly, and I don't think the alpaca is very good for socks. So I don't know how well these will last. I might end up like wearing through the heel quite quickly. Um, as is traditional, the second I've started recording, someone is now doing strimming out in their garden and they've come up. I think they're just over the back here. Strimming away. They literally wait until they start. I don't know why they don't just text me and say, when will you be podcasting? Because I need to plan I need to plan some garden chores. So annoying. Anyway, so that is those. So I don't know how well they'll last. Maybe that's why I've left them on the hangers and procrastinating about wearing them because I don't want to wear them once and go, oh, that was it. <laughs> Hopefully they'll last a bit longer than that. So that's my socks. Um, should we stick with knitting? Begin with knitting and then go on to the crochet? I think so. So knitting wise, I had started these last time. So again, if you were here before, you remember these. Ah, now, did I bring up the other needles no oh bother where have I put them ah I did bring them up they're here yes yeah, so I was talking about these rabbity mitts I haven't got the pattern I'll put it here and in show notes of course but they are called I think they're called the rabbity mittens and muffeties and I'm making the muffeties which is basically fingerless gloves. Um, so I have made one. I'd, I was about this stage when I showed them last time. Look at my colour work, people. Look how neat that looks. Oh, oh it's like the colour work of my dreams. This is what I always wanted. <laughs> when I was knitting my jumper, it kind of blocked out and it was okay, but this looks pretty neat from the start, which I'm very excited about. Um, yeah, so I have finished one whole rabbit muffety. Now, I haven't blocked this yet, so I don't know if it will come up on the camera, but his bum is actually quite wobbly wobbly and it's not laying flat. But I'm hoping, see, so I haven't got a lot of stretch in these things either. This is why the colour work looks neat, because I haven't got much float, giving the floats behind, <laughs> which looks nice for a picture. You know, it looks good for the rabbit, not so good for the wearing. Um, yeah, anyway, so his bum's sort of hunching up a bit because it hasn't, hopefully that will come out in blocking, but his head is looking, I thought, pretty blooming good without any blocking. So the only downside is they're a little bit tight. So there he is. So here, lovely perfect fit here lovely perfect fit it's just a bit tight across here and that's where the like the longest strands of color work are so i don't know if it's just that or whether i should just gone up a whole size all round i kind of just wish i'd gone up a size for this where the thumb increases were but yeah so they're a little snug there but they're not too bad i do find it quite hard <laughs> get them off though but when they're on they don't feel as bad as they look if you see what I mean when I'm trying to pull them off you think wow how do you even get into those but actually when they're on they don't feel that bad they do feel snug here but they don't feel that bad um yeah so I, my original plan was not to put the thumb in I was just going to knit them as little straight wristies because I do kind of like wearing them like that 
but seeing how snug the cuff was I thought actually my thumb might not have any space if I don't put the poplar increases in so I'm glad I did that Shall I show you what's on the thumb there yeah I just love these I love them they're so cute that pattern on there is really nice but the rabbit is adorable these little berries Oh, so cute. So this is the rabbit in profile, sideways on and looking sideways. And then when I start the other mitt, he will be looking that way. So he'll be sideways on and looking that way. But there's also included in the pattern, the rabbit sitting forward and just his head is turned. Because apparently I've decided it's a he. Um, yeah, so you've got just his head that way or that way. So you can choose whichever design you want and you can choose whether you have the fingerless mitts or the full mitten. So there's kind of like, there's so many, you know, there's quite a few variations and they're all charted out. You don't have to just sit and reverse the chart yourself. It's all been done for you by the designer. Um, yeah, so after not really enjoying any of the colour work on my colour work sweater, like I wanted the sweater so I had to kind of push through the colour work because I was like oh this isn't I feel like it's all going wrong and I'm not enjoying it at all and I found it a bit irritating to knit actually <laughs> I was like I just want to just wanted to just keep going all this changing colour and it feeling all horrible it was not a happy experience but then I was really pleased with the finished object whereas this I actually quite enjoyed the experience of it it's a lot smaller, so you whiz through the rows a lot quicker. Um, but maybe because I could sort of see it was coming out a bit better, that kind of spurred me on. Yeah, it just, I actually enjoyed making these. So that was a bit of a revelation. So uh, the yarn I haven't told you about yet is Knit Picks Palette. Um, it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. This colour I think is called tea rose and this is something like Finlay heather maybe. Um, I think that's right. I'll put the put it in tune. Right sorry about that the old battery conked out so hopefully we've got roughly where we were before. Um, so yes yarn colours I was saying about that I will put in show notes. So the other thing I was talking about with these is needles so i was saying about maybe trying knitting it on dpn's because you know so i didn't get the problem of the trying to take the float around the corner and sort of accidentally making it you know too short across there rather than it coming out and going properly around the corner so some of you suggested some higher higher flyers which I hadn't heard of and I had brought these last time but I hadn't tried them so I got two sets so they're like flexible DPNs basically and you can get three different lengths I've got the eight inch which is 20 centimeters and also the six inch which is 15 so I tried these and I have to say I did not get on with them at all so I uh, tried the longer ones first but the thing is, you've got, I expected there to be a longer, sort of this area to be longer. But it seems that it isn't, it's actually quite short. But anyway, so at first, you know, I've got a decent amount of needle there, but because this is quite short, most of the stitches fit under the longest bit of the needle and the flexible bit was just at the very end. So even though you get three needles, it's still, they actually want to sit quite tight together. It's actually quite hard to sort of force them so you can get the other needle into work, sort of in the round. So I don't, I don't know, I didn't particularly get on with them. Oh, hello. Someone wants to come in. So yeah, so the needles. So I still found those really quite fiddly and awkward. So I thought, well that's fine, it's just because this bit's longer. I just need to use the shorter ones 
and that will have a longer bit of cable there and that will be that will be fine so I tried these ones because it has got a bit longer cable there but it has got a very tiny end and I just tried slipping the needle uh, the stitches onto that but it's just so so tiny I just found it really fiddly like there's there's nothing to hold like by the time you're trying to sort of go back to hook into a stitch there you're sort of holding it barely on the join and I just uh, to be honest I didn't even get all the stitches on these I just thought do you know what I don't love these and I think I might have persevered with them longer and possibly would have you know got, become used to them and enjoyed using them but but since I discovered or had remembered rather when I was making my other pair that when you're uh, doing colour work Sorry, my yarn got caught up. When you're doing colour work on the circular needles, you can just flip the colour work through and then you're working with the floats on the outside and they can't cut across them. They have to go round the outside because they're all on the outside of the circle. So the theory being that partly they'll naturally, you'll get a little bit more length because, you know, they're going round the outside, but also that those corners if you like those end each end you don't get that cutting across of the floats so I'd got on quite well with just doing it like this so there was no particular incentive to sort of try these and sort of do a few rows and see how I got on I just kind of tried to put them on and thought nope don't like that <laughs> just thought I'm gonna just go back to this method that's you know knitting on Magic Loop is my favourite anyway, it's how I knit all my socks and everything. And, uh, you know, it seems to be working okay for the colour work I've done. So there was no sort of, there was nothing pushing me to sort of persevere with those. So I probably didn't give them a very fair crack of the whip. Because, um, you know, quite a few things that it sort of, it all feels a bit awkward and unnatural at first. But then once you get into it, you're like, oh yeah, I can't believe... You know, can't believe how differently I feel about them now. So yeah, so I'm just turning them inside out to knit them and I'm going on my merry way without worrying about these. So that is my rabbity mitts. Um, and I think I'll get the other one probably done quite quickly now, I think. Um, I did want to sort of show you the sort of pre-blocking mitt though. So we're going to record this and then we're going to try and compare afterwards and see if we notice the difference. It is very hard to show on the camera. It looks much more bobbly in real life. I'm trying to show you this way so you can see how wavy it is in real life. But we're not getting that at all, are we? It just looks sort of not bad at all. It kind of looks okay. So I don't think we're going to see any mass difference from blocking. But we'll, we'll put one there and then hopefully try and put the other one there and we'll see, we'll see the difference, if any. Um, so that's knitting. Now crochet. So first of all I'm going to talk about my Vintage Waves, which is coming on quite nicely. It's in a bit of a screwed up mess. Right, here we go. There we are. That's where I'm at at the moment. So this is the Vintage Wave sweater and it's by gorgeous Clarissa Beth. Uh, let me give you her actual name. She's Crochet Cakes on YouTube and Instagram, I believe. Clarissa Beth Lopez Rodriguez. So that's her actual, the actual designer name. Um, yeah, so I did speak about this last time. Um, and I was saying how I was in a quandary about yarn because I have two balls. So this is fingering weight and you need two balls of each colour. Or two hanks, whatever. So I had two of this sort of um, pale yellowy colour. But I only had one of this sort of peachy in between -y colour, which is this. 
and it's getting low so I was worried I wouldn't have enough but also because Clarissa Beth had used a sock yarn she's there's two different kinds she's got one with short sleeves um, and then she made another one which is a slightly larger fitting with longer sleeves that she made by pairing a plain and a striped sock yarn pa um, it was she did tell me patterns croy sock yarn and I really liked how that looked I liked all the sort of different patches of color so I tried to I wanted to recreate that but I didn't have the yarn so I grabbed these two were the two that I wanted to put in. This one is a gorgeous gift from Clarissa Beth herself, so that was very special and very appropriate. And I initially didn't think it would work with those. I talked about this last time, and this is getting repetitive if you were here before, so I will skip that. But basically, I didn't think that would work, but once I crocheted it up, I did. So that's why all these blobs of colour are in it. So these brown bits and these peachy bit, and then these other sort of reddy yellowy blobs, that's just this yarn, the speckling on this yarn. So I really like the overall look, and I've just been remembering, so I've been carrying the sort of um, other yarn underneath and just sort of remembering to bring it up and switch and do a few stitches and then go back to this colour again. And sort of doing that quite randomly just as I thought looked okay so that's how that's coming on which I quite like I'm happy with that and I think I've pretty much got length now um, it's quite cropped but that's fine I'm quite happy with how that looks so I just need to do the sleeves really but I'm slightly concerned that I should have made a smaller size because I went I went to size up than I perhaps would have normally done because I wanted that um, slightly larger size to fit over things. So Calista Beth has one where she's wearing the t-shirt version and she just got that on and the other version she's got like over a, sh um, a shirt and it just looks really cute so that's what I wanted to do. So I, went, I deliberately went for a bit larger size because that's what I also wanted to do. But I'm just slightly concerned that perhaps I didn't need to maybe I would have been all right with just my size um, because I've just got it's just slightly wanting to pull up there so I think if I'd gone for the smaller size there would have been a little less stitches and just the sleeves would have split just a smidge earlier and I think maybe maybe I should have gone for that it's that thing of like I've got gauge I got gauge quite well actually I haven't got the swatch because I didn't want to waste any of this so I did it blocked it and then unraveled it <laughs> um so this as you this here is like denser that way so it will stretch out this way um yeah so my stitch gauge is more or less there anyway and then when I block it I get a bit more sort of that's about where it's going to be so I get a little bit more length that way so I think I'm all right gauge wise but it's just that you know I wasn't quite sure how much I needed to allow for getting something under and oh, I tend to sort of err on the side of it being a little bit bigger because if it's too small I'm just not going to wear it where if something's a bit baggy I probably am but you know I'm never quite sure how <laughs> cautious to be so I think this will be fine I don't think it's going to be too bad I need to get the sleeves on really to sort of see how that fits then but yeah I'm just a at this moment I'm just thinking oh, I should have gone I should have just gone for my normal size so yeah so that's my only concern on that one I might add a few rows of just this um, main collar that's not in the pattern but I quite like how this has got this little band at the top and I thought I might pop that on the bottom I think it'd look really nice it'd make it look nice and t-shirty if I put it on the bottom and then maybe just did a small sleeve and put it on there I think that would look really cute but given that I want to have a little bit longer sleeve if I can I'm not sure but I might pop it on do the sleeves and see because I can always just take it off the bottom and leave it with this bottom um, as it should be so I don't know whether I'll add that modification or not 
but yeah that's how much I've got left to do sleeve so I don't know if I'm going to get them as long as I was imagining but I'm just going to go and get out you know make them as long as I can with what I have because it should I'm aiming for sort of like a three quarter ish or I don't know is that like a half sleeve a half to three quarter ish sleeve so I'll see how that goes and I will report back next time hopefully oops so the next thing to talk about is my cardigan the thing I am currently wearing which is I'm going to call it my grace cardigan because I made it in Stylecraft Grace yarns and that seems as good a name as any let's give you a quick whiz round on I haven't got a specific pattern is the point but it's based on those kind of um, granny square well granny hexagon cardigans so if you put granny hexy or granny hexagon cardi into Google you tend to get quite a few results and YouTube videos and like quite a load of information because it's quite a popular design um, you know kind of a popular idea because it's quick and easy so basically you make a, a hexagon a granny style hexagon and then it folds so you get this kind of L shape which is like one half of the cardigan and then you make a second one which makes the other half and then you can just seam it down the back bam done super quick super easy fab so I like the idea of that my sister made one that's it and I saw hers and I was like oh actually that's really nice she made it in just one color um, in a variegated yarn and it looked really pretty so I thought I'll try that but what I wanted was I wonder if it would work with just solid granny stitch I don't want it to be so holy and open and I also had this other idea where I wanted to make a cardi that was kind of plain but it just had a little granny square detail on the sleeves and as I've done on the waist that you've seen so I thought well this might be the the way to do it you know I can just do a solid um, granny for the hexagon and then just add this detail at the bottom that might work out rather well so that's what I did and it works out perfectly it works out just the same you just follow it in a solid pattern and you can make it the same way so the only you know as the all the tutorials that you'll find so the only modifications I made so I made my hexagons about the size that I thought would be right for the sleeve it's actually slightly bigger in the end but anyway can you can you see that actually how it, it does sort of go back in again or I suddenly realized I do need to do some decreases um yeah so I made it about the size I thought well that looks about right for the sleeve it's about right here though actually well we'll come back to that it's about right you know to do the body get around my body but what I'll do because I want to put a sort of edge on here I'll do I sewed up the sleeves and I'll do a few extra rows on the back just to give me a little kind of a, like a neck space I thought that will sort of fit better then it will look nicer because normally if you make it and you sew them together if you can imagine you've put the back seams together the front is the same size so I thought I'll leave it a bit more open that will be good so I did that so I added a few more rows to the back joined that together and then I so my square ends there and but I didn't want to make it any wider so I thought well, I'll just add rounds to that to make the sleeves longer so that's fine and then I just made up a load of granny squares ready and then I worked out um, like how many stitches mm -hmm. so as I go to the edge of the granny square I've got what have I got there three 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 and like a stitch in either like a chain space in each either corner I didn't do a chain space along the edges so I've got nine eleven stitches so I just timed that by the amount of granny squares I had and I thought that's kind of where I want to be I'll just do a few um, 
you know, I can just amend that on this little stretch here if I need to, to get it roughly right. So when I stopped, my original plan was to do six granny squares to meet up with this. So I tried that, but it just was very, well, it was a whole nother square bigger. It just seemed very, what's the word? What are these type of sleeves? Like kind of balloony. It seemed very balloony and it was really cool. And I did like how it looked, but I thought it might be a bit much for me. I'm not used to this kind of sleeves and I quite often find them a bit of a faff. I'll play it safe and I'll just go for the five granny squares because I'd kind of made this with a view to having the one edge that would be the sleeve about the right stitch count so I thought no I need to decrease the stitch count to get like a slightly shallower sleeve so I'll just do five granny squares and so I just did some decreases along here until I got to roughly the right amount um, I think I was like still a couple of stitches out but I just when I joined I just lost a couple of stitches as I joined so that was the sleeves and then once I had the granny squares added on I did a few more rows and I decreased quite sharply there so I lost quite a lot of stitches to get to like a nice wrist size and then I just did some um, so these are all trebles that's UK trebles so US doubles and I just did some UK doubles or US singles just for a few rounds to be like a cuff because I wanted it to hang uh, you know just on my hand there and then same with the body so my square ends there so I just added a few rounds um, a few rows just to give me a bit more length I actually just I did a because I wanted them to look you know because this is all right side I didn't want to then show the wrong side down here so I actually joined the yarn worked a row cut it and then went back and joined again and I wove all the ends in just because I just wanted that look I didn't want them you know I wanted it to look consistent so then I had all my granny squares so I just joined those all on there and I just added a little bit of ribbon so I don't know how well can I show that? Let's get that up. Yeah, just that crochet ribbing, um, which I can't remember how you do it now. I think you, you crochet one row. So it's DC, UK DC, so that's American SCs. So you crochet one row kind of normally into the stitch and then the other row you just crochet into one loop. I can't remember if it's the front or back though. I guess I don't know I can't remember which way I was working but anyway so I did that all the way along and you're kind of attaching to this as you go so you're working this way um, and then I wondered about adding that same ribbon around the whole sort of edge all the way around here and I kind of didn't bother partly well I wasn't sure I'd need it I was thinking oh it'll bring it too close together I don't, you know, it, it won't sit right, it'll all ride up on my neck, I'm, I'm not sure that will work, but th seeing how it does fit now, I kind of, I have, you know, I have kind of got a gap, if I breathe in I can just about get it to meet, but <laughs> could have kind of done with that ribbon really, and then I could have put buttonholes on it, but again I wasn't particularly fussed about that, so I thought I'll just do an edge, you know, just do some stitches around the edge, just to tidy it, and that will do. So that is how I made it. Did you follow all that? <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm really happy with it. I really love it. It kind of turned out more or less how I imagined, which is good. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So the yarn I told you already, Starcraft Grace, this is the stuff. So it's kind of like a, a faux mohair, I guess. So it's 85% premium acrylic. It has got 10% mohair in it and 5% wool, but I think, I'm assuming, that sort of the acrylic is made to look kind of mohair. I, I'm assuming you don't get all that fluffiness just from that 10%. I don't know. Um, so I used this gorgeous oystery colour and this hibiscus. I used petals. This is really nice. And I also used Hip, which is this gorgeous deep cherry red. That's really nice too. Yeah, so I just, I literally just went and picked my favourite colours and I thought, 
even though you've got there's a little bit of clashiness here but I kind of like that so yeah um when I showed this part made a couple of podcasts ago um quite a few of you then were like oh are you doing the pattern because I want the pattern for that um so I don't know is the answer well I guess the answer is yeah I could do but what shall I do like is it best like a lot of the ones I've seen for the you know the standards or granny square or granny hexagon star ones they are on YouTube videos is that what people would prefer would you prefer a video of me showing how to do it because I kind of think that could work um or would you prefer it just written down I don't know or maybe both maybe it works like here's the YouTube video but you know obviously you can't show every single row can you on a YouTube video otherwise you'd be there a week but yeah I don't know just thoughts thoughts on that because I'm quite up for making myself another one with this as the main color because I could even make it plain as well I don't need to have the granny squares in so I don't know whether to make like a plain version and just have it in just that color or whether to still add sort of the granny square detail in yeah I don't know how many sorry I'm just thinking about how I would do that now just wondering about how keeping it paler and just having the granny squares in that if I do it hmm? I don't know I don't know ideas maybe just those three that would be cute wouldn't it as well if that's the main color yes anyway <laughs> Uh, I wanted to tell you what thickness it is. It is, it's an Aran weight yarn, so that's roughly a worsted weight, almost a worsted weight. So it recommends a four to six millimeter uh, size for needles and for hooks. So that's a six to ten in US needles, or a G to J apparently. Six to yeah, six to ten still a G to J. Um, yeah, I don't know how well you can get hold of this in the US, but yeah, anyway, so let me know, let me know what you think on that, let me know if you would be interested, and yeah, just some ideas on what people prefer or how people like to, would like to, you know, receive that pattern, and then I'll see. I don't know. <laughs> I'll see if I can do that or whether I can't. Um, yeah, so that's my fluffy grace cardigan. Um, I do have a little bit more crochet, which is using this lovely sheep ears yarn, sheep ears stone washed, and these gorgeous colours. So I got most of these colours when I was making my painted anemones blanket, which I'll pop in here to show you. Um, yes, yeah, so these are mostly my leftovers, although I did uh, have a surplus of the cream ones. Oh, and the pink ones from when I did painted roses as well, and these ones, yeah, they were kind of my background colour of my painted roses. Yeah, so anyway, the combination of those two, painted roses and painted anemone, these were kind of what I had them in for that so I thought I'll play with these I've been thinking about the idea I felt like I'm talking very quickly I've been thinking about the idea of doing a rosy posy video tutorial so the rosy posy square is a photo tutorial on my blog at the moment and I did it years ago like maybe 10 years ago it might even be and I thought I think some I saw someone doing um, using it on Instagram for something and sort of saying, oh, you know, this is the rosy posy square by Cherry Heart. And I was like, oh yeah, that old square. Oh, that's quite a nice square. Let me show it to you while I'm waffling on about it, so you know what I'm talking about. So that's it. Um, I was just going to find the one. So oh, here's the two I originally made. So there's this one and then kind of like the opposite way so the colours are reversed which I kind of really just like that like that um, yeah so I thought 
you know, a photo tutorial on my blog is really good, but maybe a video tutorial would be handy now. People like video tutorials now, don't they? So that could work. And also I've been looking for sort of another project. I've finished this now and I'm bringing my, you know, vintage waves to an end soon. So I, I want another project and I'm just sort of kind of fishing around for what the next thing should be. I'm in the mood for, I've, got, I've still got a few things like in my queue, but I'm kind of fishing around for something else. I'm in the mood for something different that I haven't thought about. So yeah, so I've wondered about these. So I've made quite a few of these up in these four colours. Um, so these colours, by the way, were inspired by the blossoms in my garden. I put a picture up on Instagram to show the blossoms but it was like a cherry tree with these sort of uh, very pale and a darker kind of pink it's all much red on the real tree but I didn't have that and I thought this looked cute and then this really white fluffy blossom and then these really acidy green leaves and from my window when I you know I'm in the kitchen I can just look up the garden and I see the cherry with the white behind with the little green acidy green leaves poking through and um, yeah just like oh that looks gorgeous every time I see it I'm like oh it's so pretty oh that's lovely so I thought oh why don't I take that as my inspiration then so yeah so I've made all kinds of different I've just stuck with those four colours but just done them in different orders to get a different look to the squares so I really like them. They're almost kind of watermelon, aren't they? Or sort of juicy. They feel like a very juicy colours. So I made a few. It was we have had one sunny day, and I sat outside and I made these. And because it was a lovely sunny day and I was enjoying myself so much, I didn't even bother to weave in the ends because that would have spoiled the whole experience. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm wondering whether to turn that into a blanket. Let's let's use the design board. Previously on Cherry Heart, we have spoken about the difficulty of showing off lots of things at once. So the idea is we'll get this old design board up here. And I can pop things on. Would have been easier if I didn't have all the ends everywhere. And you can see more than one thing at once. I'll try not to put the same colours together, but I've run out. I've only got another one of those there. Let's say that one would go there and we'd have another pink in there or something. Yeah, so that's how it's going to look if I did it together in a blanket. I'm not sure about too much of this colour. I don't know, it's quite a limited palette for me. I normally go for quite a few colours. This is only four. That feels a bit restrained. I do really like that one though. It just looks so... I love the sort of gradientness. That's my favourite. That's my favourite. Uh, that one could go... Try to arrange my squares now, aren't I? Sorry. Here we go. Put that one there. This one there. There we go. That looks all right. There we go. So that's how it maybe looks in the blanket. I don't know. I'm not sure about, I might just have to, if I was going to do this, I might have to decide on my preferred combos and just go with that. There's a lot of small combinations you could do. I went and I worked them all out and there's like six for each one of these. So six fours, 24. So there's 24 different combinations. You can actually have just those four colors. So I might make up one of each and see how that looks, see how I feel then. And then maybe I'd just make up some of my favourites and sort of bias it a little bit. I think I like this sort of paler. I'm not sure how I feel with too many of these as the background. Anyway, we're just waffling now. But that's how it looks. It does look kind of spring and fresh. I do quite like it. So that might be my next project. I don't know. I just don't know. 
so I think that's it for me for this time. I will leave it there and let you get back to your busy, busy lives. And I shall go and have a nice cup of coffee and edit this, I think. That would be nice. Um, yes, yeah, so I will hopefully see you before too long with another episode again. And I hope you have a very lovely time until then and get some moments, some beautiful, calm, quiet crafting moments, the best moments. I hope you get some of those. See you next time. Bye. The stitch gauge I get yeah. up. Could you, could you not? <coughs> uh, yes, I know, next door. Well, we the same. Right, where were we? This is where editing comes in. Cut out the crap. For there is normally lots of crap.